This first section is about the basic concepts of probability theory. For unsupervised machine learning we need models that learn from the structure of the data. Since we have no information about a desired outcome, we need to rely on the concept of uncertainty. Probability theory provides us a consistent framework for the quantification and manipulation of uncertainty and forms one of the central foundations for unsupervised machine learning and pattern recognition. In one of the other videos we will also cover decision theory. Probability theory and decision theory put together will allow us to make optimal predictions given all the information available to us, even though that information may be incomplete or ambiguous. Let us now start with a simple example in order to dive into the concept of probability theory. Imagine we have two boxes. One of the boxes is red and the other is blue. The red box contains eight fruits in total, consisting of two green apples and six oranges. The other box, the blue one, contains four fruits in total, consisting of three green apples and one orange. The task is now the following. We pick one of the boxes randomly and we draw one random fruit out of that box. Then we observe the color of that fruit we picked. After that we replace that fruit back onto the same box it came from. In order to choose a box we pick from, we roll a dice. If the number on the dice turns out to be smaller or equal 4, we pick the red box. In all the other cases we pick the blue box. Inside one box every fruit is equally likely to get picked. We pick a box and a fruit many times, let's say a thousand times. Then we have a thousand observations. Now for the outcome of the experiment we could ask ourselves a lot of questions. For example, how often did I pick the red box? How often did I pick the blue box? How many apples were picked? How many oranges were picked? And also, how often did I pick an orange from the red box? How often did I pick an orange from the blue box? And of course, how often did I pick an apple from the red box or from the blue box? These are a lot of questions which we will be answering in a moment. But let me draw your attention to one very special question. A question that you may not have thought of in the first place. Let us assume I will only present you a fruit. Let's say it's an orange. But I don't give you the information from which box this fruit was picked. Then the crucial question would be, what is the probability that I picked the fruit from the red box? Or from the blue box if you want, but let us stay with the red box. The difference of this question is now that the process of generating the data point was hidden from you. You only see the data point. You are now trying to guess from the observation of the data point about the process of how this data point was generated. And this is one of the key concepts of probabilistic unsupervised learning. You can of course take a moment to think about how to answer these questions and how to answer the last question in general. Okay, to approach this question, let me tell you that in order to answer the last question, we first have to answer the above questions to make our life a bit easier. So, how often did I pick from the red box? So first we have to care about the notations. We say n is the number of times we repeat the experiment. We said we want to pick a thousand times. The observation we can make from the data point, let's call that y, and y is an element of o and a. o and a stands for orange and apple. 
So y can either be an orange or an apple. Then we also need to note the box from where we picked from. Let's call that S for source. And S is an element of R and B. So the source can either be the red box or the blue box. When we ask the question of how often we picked something, let us denote that not by how many times we will pick, but by the probability of picking this outcome. So we denote that with P for probability. And then of S is equal to R. In the second line we want to know the probability of the source S is equal to B. Then you could ask yourself, after picking a thousand times, what is the probability that I picked an apple? We say P of Y is equal to A. And of course for the orange, by writing P of Y is equal to O. Now we go on to the notation of the probability of picking an apple from the red box. You write it down as the probability of y is equal to o and s is equal to r and probability of y is equal to o and s is equal to b. The probability of y is equal to an apple and s is equal to the red box. Probability of y is equal to a and s equal to b. And the final question, given that I picked an orange, what is the probability that I picked from the red box? We denote this by the probability of s equal to r, given that I picked an orange. This dash indicates a given statement. So we want to know the probability that we pick from the red box given the circumstance that we pick an orange. This we can of course also turn around. We can also ask the question given that I picked from the red box what is the probability that I will pick an orange? As you will see, this question is a lot easier to answer. If you just look at the red box, you see six oranges and two apples. So it will be six over eight, which is three over four. But let us suppose that we are not allowed to look inside the boxes. So for the rest of this part, we suppose that we have no clue what is inside the boxes. Then we could also obtain these results by measurement if we look at the outcome of our thousand data points. So let's put it into this diagram. Now from that data we have to estimate our probabilities. Let's start with the probability that I picked from the red box, P of S equal to R. Obviously, I just have to count all the dots in here of all the data points of the red box and then divide it by the total number of data points to get the ratio. Let us denote the count of the data points by a small n for number and then we write the number n of and then we have to add these boxes separately. Now what does one of these boxes represent? If we look at the bottom left field for example, this is the number of data points picked from the red box and being in apple. So the notation would be s is equal to r, the red box, and y is equal to o for oranges. This we have to add to the number of also s is equal to red, but this time y is equal to a for apples. 
This we have to divide by the total number of data points n. Using the numbers I have there, this would be 170 plus 493 divided by a thousand is equal to 663 divided by 1000 and this would be approximately 2 over 3. We can also do that for the probability of s is equal to the blue box. That would result in 1 over 3, which becomes clear if you think about it. We have only two boxes, so this statement would mean the same as the probability of s is not equal to r. That you can of course calculate by 1 minus the probability of r. Another thing you can calculate easily is the probability of choosing an orange from the red box. The probability of s is equal to red and y is equal to orange is then the number of data points of s equal r and y equal o divided by all the data points. A look in our table tells us that we have 493 in the numerator and 1000 in the denominator. This would approximately be one half. Again, this is now the probability of having picked an orange from the red box. There is no condition involved yet. This is what the comma in the expression tells us. We come to the conditional now. Let's say, given that I picked from the red box, what is the probability that, I, that the fruit I picked is an orange? What do we have to consider? So, given that I picked from the red box means I only have to look at the left column of the box. What is the number of times that I picked an orange from the red box divided by the total number of having picked from red? So, s is equal to red and y is equal to be an orange plus the number of picking from red and picking an apple. This in the denominator is now the sum of that left column. So there are all the data points that fall into the condition of being picked from the red box. Okay, now there are connections between these probabilities. For example, this probability that I picked precisely the orange from the red box, I can use the previous formula and extend it as follows. This is the same formula, but I just extend it by multiplying and dividing by the following expression. This is the same. I just extended it with this expression. It would simply cancel out. The first term we just had here. This is the conditional probability that we picked from the red box. Now the second term we recognize as this term here. This is obviously the probability of s is equal to r. So we get this formula here by simple extension. We can write it down again without the steps in between. This is the first of three important formulas here. So let's do a frame around it. And we call this one the product rule. That means if we know two of these probabilities, we can easily calculate the first one by applying the formula. If you want to check, you can multiply our 3 over 4 
by 2 over 3 and we arrive at 1 half. One other thing you can do to show the relation of the probability is to look at p of s equals red and use the definition of it number of s equal r and y equal o plus n of s is equal to, to r and y equal to a. Then we do something even simpler. We just split apart the sum by writing this expression. n of s equal r and y equal o divided by n plus n of s equal r and y equal a divided by n. As simple as that. We look what these terms represent. Then we see already that these are precisely both of these two probabilities. p of s equals r and y equals o plus p of s equals r and y equals a. Let's write that one down here once again. So it's basically p of s equals r. If I now introduce a new random variable and I sum over all possible values of this y, let's call that y tilde of p of s equal r and y is equal to y tilde. You can always say we introduce a new random variable, but I sum over all the possibilities that this random variable can take. You can always draw a diagram like this to make that plausible. The previous formula was called the product rule and what better name for this would there be then to call this sum rule. By the way, we always use the explicit notation. This is recommended for the beginning, but sometimes as a shorthand people often do something like this. This is the short form, the abbreviation of this. Okay, in this video we got to know the product rule and the sum rule, which are the basic formulas we need to derive the next very important formula for machine learning, that is Bayes rule. So stay tuned and see you in the next video.